Friday, the 6th of July, yes, is the end of the first week after the Cold Quest. The Cold Quest has gone to an end last week. All the develop most of the most of the developers, got a little announcement there, are back at home. Uh, we are back. The studio shrank to the art artist team upstairs working on spring and the developers working here. Sergey uh, Sibran, Campbell and uh, Campbell sticking around for a bit, and Brecht is now working at the Blender Institute, uh, like like for good. So if you're on the development fund or the Blender Cloud, pat yourself on the back. This is happening because of you. What also is happening because of you and the CodeQuest uh, supporters is that now we have Blender 2.8 Alpha. What does it mean? Well, to celebrate the end of the code quest, to, to have like a product that you say, okay, we worked for three months and okay, well, what what's coming out of it is an alpha. So it's basically the same version as the day before, but with the alpha title on it. So it's like a way of, of uh, calling it um, like, okay, this is what came out of it. In order to have that a bit more, <laughs> more than just the alpha word in the splash screen, we also changed the theme. Now it's using Flatty Dark, which is based on the Flatty Light uh, theme that was around in um, 2.7. Uh, some might, might be familiar with it. It's just a very bright theme. Now the default theme is a similar branch of that, but in dark. It is, I mean, it's easier on the eye. You can, of course, change it. You make your own. But the idea is that now by default, Blender will be a bit darker. There has been so many things happening since last week. There is arrangements on the, the headers, the interface, new, as I said, new colors. Also a new way to interact with Blender is a new, the minimal key map has been implemented as well. So there are a few things that I could make whole videos about it and I will. So I'm not gonna go into that, but just, okay. What is this Blender 2.8 alpha thing? If you go to builder.blender.org, the same place where you get all the, the previous builds, you will get Blender 2.8. And on the splash screen, it's gonna say a little alpha word next to 2.80. That means that you have this new Blender version. The colors also should be there. If you don't have it, it's probably because it's, it's, taking, it from, it's taking them from your user preferences. So if you wanna get like the full on 2.8 experience, how it's supposed to be right now, you should go to file, load factory settings, and uh, you don't need to save it, but this is basically how it looks at the moment, especially you don't, you shouldn't have a guy talking next <laughs> at the bottom left. Um, so this is how it looks. And it's a spray, um, um, I think it's much more cleaner how it used to be. The top bar is still there. You can also collapse it. The top bar is showing the active tools, but by default, when you start, you don't have any uh, uh, active tools. But yeah, it's showing active tools and um, the settings for them. Um, you can also collapse them. Remember now we also have the, um, the those settings or most of the settings that appear on the top left. They're now here as a, the, the tool settings in the properties editor. Um, the status bar is also there and can also, it can be collapsed right now. There is no, the, in the future there will be like a toggle, like show status bar. But for now, if you don't like it, you can just put it down, just like dragging and collapsing. And the same, the same way you do it with, uh, with the top bar. Uh, the only thing that for the time being is not being saved on the blend file. So when you save and reload, it's gonna uh, pop up again. You need to, the, it's, it's work in progress, of course. But um, just to know that you can do it right now. Also the icons now are using a more, the, it's more dimmed because it's using the same color as the text is following that. Um, so overall there has been polishing all over the place. Now the, the popovers, now they have different width depending on the content they have. You can specify it there. It's in Python, so if you're making an add-on that is using popovers, uh, you also see that some of them are more narrow, some more of them are wider. So it has been polishing all over um, the place. It has been also a splitting of more editors. The drivers are also split. Um, this, um, Settings are also split, also the, the icons in the properties editor. I'm gonna make the interface a bit bigger so you can see it better. Kidding, it's actually just for me to see it better. And um, of, of course now we need more space, now there's more scrolling, but uh, remember the mockup where these uh, tabs are gonna be vertical here. 
So we're gonna make this a bit slightly wider. We're gonna make them fit here. And then you have, we have more room for activities and for more tabs or for add-ons to add their own tabs. And yeah, it, it will be much more, it would use more when we add more tools. So this is the visual part. You will find changes all over the board. There has been changes on popovers. There has been fixes to themes, has been changes all over the place. But you will also find a new way to interact uh, or a simpler <laughs> way to interact with Blender, which is a minimal key map. What does it mean? It means that the Blender 2.7 key map is not enabled by default. You can enable by default, of course. You can, in the splash screen, you check, you, or in the user preferences, you can change your interaction from Blender to be 2.7x. And this will make it just behave like Blender 2.7. So you have all the like tab for um, edit mode and control tab for weight paint mode, for example. In Blender 2.8, the or in the alpha at the moment, I should always mention the alpha because this is working progress. It might change in the future. And someone is watching this video later, I should say in 2.8 alpha of today, you can still press tab for um, edit mode. And previously in the last video, I think you had to hold tab for the Pi menu. Now this is assigned to Control Tab. So that way, um, there is a thing with with the Pi menus is that in 2.7, a key could only be a Pi menu. So you click on it and it will be a Pi. So it will feel very really fast. In 2.8, in order to have a key behave both ways, like a, a tab, uh, like a tap for something, and then hold or drag for a Pi menu, then it that introduces it a bit of a lag, and it felt a bit sluggish. So in order to avoid that, tab is just edit mode and then control tab brings the pie menu where you can choose which um, which mode you want. So that way you can quickly change the same way it was when you will hold tab before. So this is what uh, we're testing at the moment. It, it brings the speed of tab back, which was a bit lost. And uh, especially when we're working with more scene, more more characters, more geometry, it's, you can tell that there is a slight uh, improvement in, in speed, also back to speed with uh, 2.7. Um, I think many of the, the performance uh, reports were actually just key map changes that happened. So yeah, that's one of the changes that happened. There's also many of the tools that were redundant or were like um, uh, repeated were, uh, are being removed now. So for example, um, there was F1 for opening and then Alt, uh, Control O for opening as well, two shortcuts. Well, now it's only one of them, it's Control O. But I will make a video about the minimal key map. Just wanted to warn you about it. So this is how Blender 2.8 um, Alpha is going to look. It's going to fill with the minimal key map. And something that you will notice too is that some add-ons that you are used to are disabled. So 2.8 now checks in the uh, add-ons uh, version number, it checks for which version is it um, supported for. So if the add-on says 2.79, then the add-on is not going to load in 2.8. The add-on, of course, can be, um, can be updated. It's just a matter of changing the, the number. If it's not, it will show upgrade to 2.8 required. So it's just a matter of changing in the, in the add-on itself, the add-on developer and it will fix it. But some add-ons having uh, migrated already, it's not recommended if you have an add-on to update it right now, because otherwise you, if the API is gonna change. So you sh just to avoid having to do the same work twice, like update it now and update it later, it's better to just wait a little bit. You can also, of course, update it, but there are a few add-ons that the team here in Spring are using. So some of them have been migrated. You can, if you're a developer, you can look at those commits for um, reference, but the SVG export is fixed, the OBJ is also uh, fixed, and something I'm really happy about is the Node Wrangler add-on is also now updated for Blender 2.8, and it also works with Eevee. So if you have a, for example, you're in Eevee and you have, am I in Eevee? Yes. Uh, you control shift click, now that works. It doesn't error anymore, so that's pretty nice. Um, another little thing that I, now that I'm here, I'm gonna just uh, show is that the material output node now can specify which target render engine is going to be um, used 
So not only Blender will use the one that is active, but also will uh, respect for which render engine is uh, this output meant for. So that makes the node trees that are shared with across multiple render engines a bit more uh, clear. So yeah, there has been many things all over the place. Since I'm here, I'm gonna just show the image uh, node now has a uh, open. <laughs> um, now it's the, the new image. So it's in, if I go to search image, if you had an input image, um, texture image, then you will see that it has a new node that you can open or also create a new image directly from here, which is also pretty, pretty handy. Um, viewport stuff. There is a new shortcut for uh, moving your, your scene around, your view around. This is more for advanced users, I guess, for because it's a bit hidden, but it's just in the nature of Lender. It's uh, all these speed ups are, uh, are there. For example, there is the new one that it will work better if I have a monkey is that if, and maybe I have a nice matcap, okay, there. So is that if you're in, for example, in the front view, you can hold Alt and middle mouse button to the left and it will start rotating. So it's basically a one uh, quick, quick way of uh, moving on your view. So down, up, up, and then it's just a, a quick way to, to switch views. It's relative to the position, so it's just like goes around your object. Um, I, I quite like the, that approach. Uh, Hialt is using it a lot here as an animator, and he proposed it, and uh, it's now there. So I think it should be, this should, should be enough for today. I have another little thing that I, it doesn't deserve like a whole video, but it's part of the new workflow. Um, stuff in Blender and the workspaces as well. So is if, um, the one of the things about having global bars, like the top bar, for example, that is global, and the status bar that is global. One of the, one of the things that uh, some people were uh, not happy about is that it, they were on every window. So every new window that you have, it had a top bar and a status bar because they're global. Well, that was um, that. We knew that was going to happen, so uh, Brecht implemented a new concept in, within Blender, which is main windows and child windows. So the main window, it's the window that has the global bars. So you have image, new main window, and it will have it will make this window that has the um, the global bars. But you can also create a new window, which is a child window. Um, so it will only contain the editors that you have, you can do, um, you can just work like usual, but then this one won't have the global um, component to it. It's great if you're working with multiple setups and you don't want to have two different global top bars and you know, on two different windows. So that is another great, great improvement. So I think I'm just making this too long. I'm gonna spend another video for the, um, for the minimal key map and there are so many other things that I'm gonna show in the upcoming days in this channel. So stay tuned, just subscribe if you wanna keep seeing uh, some more development. Of course, it's not gonna happen like every day like we used to have because it, the cold quest is over. And even though there are things that are happening every day, there are changes that we're still testing and it's just ma making a video about it is gonna make it like a lot of fuss when it's actually um, maybe just tested for one day or not. So uh, yes, it's the polishing phase right now. There is still have five, six weeks, five weeks until the beta is it, it's scheduled to come out. If you wanna know more about that, you can always check the uh, code.blender.org um, blog where you can click on the Beyond the Code Quest, and then you can read a little bit more about what are the plans, the upcoming plans. So in a nutshell, the beta in uh, six weeks and the release candidate, hopefully before the Blender conference here in Amsterdam. So that would be awesome if we can have a, a release candidate by then. So there's a lot of time for polishing, but so many things left. You can make this happening by donating to the Blender Development Fund or joining the Blender Cloud. which uh, uh, You get other kind of things. But we're working on making this better. We can, we, we're working on an improvement for the Development Fund where we can 
um, it, it will be look look it will look a lot nicer and um, we have good news for this coming so stay tuned for that subscribe if you want to see more and uh, give it a thumbs up if you think I need a haircut <laughs> I think I do ciao